very strange about winter. It's so quiet. But you know that in a few months, this forest will be teeming with activity. So where do all the creatures go in the winter? And how do they manage to survive out here in the cold? Well, if you want to survive a cold winter, you've only got a few choices. Personally, my first choice would just be to pack up and leave, migrate, go south to where the weather is warm and only the drinks are cold. Only one problem with migrating. It takes a lot of energy, or in our case, a lot of money. You see, when we plan a winter vacation, we automatically assume we're going to fly. But what if you had to walk 3,000 kilometers or more to reach a warmer climate? Not only would it take an awful lot of energy, but also take you a couple months to get there. Not very practical, especially if you only get two weeks vacation. So if you're a bird and you can fly long distances, then migrating makes sense. But if you're stuck on the ground, then migrating is often not the best solution. So if you can't leave, then what choices are left? Well, for most animals, the biggest problem with winter is the lack of food. The trees have all lost their leaves, the fruits and berries have long since disappeared, and most of the other vegetation is frozen solid. Hmm. So why not just forget the whole thing and just sleep through the winter? Hibernate, as it's called. Sounds like a great idea. Until you realize you don't get to sleep in a nice warm bed. No, you have to sleep out there in the cold. And that takes some special abilities. First of all, if you're going to hibernate, then you can't waste away the summer and fall enjoying yourself. No, instead you'll have to eat. And eat. And eat. You see, hibernating animals have to use the nice weather to build up their fat reserves. Because once winter arrives, this stored fat becomes their main source of fuel. Now, the best way to make sure your fat reserves last all winter is to reduce your energy requirements. So when animals go into hibernation, they have to slow everything down. They drop their heart rate, their breathing rate. Some hibernators can even drop their body temperature by 30 or 40 degrees. And this huge drop in metabolic activity can reduce their energy needs by 90%. Now, being able to drop your body temperature 30 or 40 degrees isn't something everyone can do. So you just don't wake up one day and decide you're going to hibernate. You have to be built for it. And a lot of animals aren't. So if you can't migrate and you can't hibernate, then there's only one choice left. You're going to have to face winter head on. But hey, no big deal. We do it all the time. Just put on a little extra insulation and you're set. Of course, it's easy for us to put on a coat and brave the elements for an hour or two. We get to go to a nice warm house when we're done. But animals don't have that luxury. And that's where this stuff comes in. To us, it may be annoying, but to a wintering animal, snow is a lifesaver. We think of snow as cold and wet. But when it piles up on the ground, it's an excellent insulator of heat. In fact, snow is such a good insulator that even when the temperature outside is minus 25 Celsius, the temperature just 30 centimeters under the snow is close to zero. And that's exactly how many animals that don't hibernate survive the winter. They huddle together in underground burrows or in nests built right under the snowpack. Here's another aspect of winter we're not too fond of. Ice. You ever wonder why it floats? I mean, it's solid. You'd think it would sink. Well, luckily it doesn't, because if it did, there wouldn't be any life in our lakes come spring. As water cools, the molecules move closer and closer together, which causes the liquid to become more dense. 
But a strange thing happens when water freezes into ice. As it crystallizes, large gaps form between the molecules. This causes the ice to expand and become less dense. So it floats. Now, if ice didn't float, then as it formed at the surface, it would sink to the bottom, which means lakes would freeze from the bottom up. And that would mean the end for all those creatures who spend their winters in the lake. That includes creatures like the frogs and the turtles that survive the winter by burrowing into the mud at the bottom of the lake. And of course, there's also the fish who remain in the cold water underneath the ice cap all winter long. Now, there's one thing that's kind of nice about winter. No bugs. But you know we'll be back in the spring, so where are they now? <laughs> well, some insects, like the monarch butterfly, take the easy way out and migrate south for the winter. Others, like the housefly and the mosquito, go dormant until the spring. But most adult insects die when the weather turns cold, after leaving behind the next generation in some form of protective shell. However, there are a few insects that do stay active all winter, like the honeybee. Now, you won't see any bees flying around in the winter, because when the weather turns cold, they all head back to the hive. For food, they eat honey. And to keep warm, they cluster together in a tight group and shake their bodies. The result is that even in winter, the temperature inside the hive rarely drops below 20 degrees Celsius. Now, luckily, humans don't have to spend the winter outside because, <laughs> let's face it, when it comes to winter survival, we're not designed very well. But that's okay because we got the big brain. So when it turns cold outside, we just turn on my favorite piece of human technology, the furnace. Oh, no. I think we're going to have to cluster together for warmth. Hey, man, keep your hands to yourself.